Hey, welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to do a shoe review between two of the most popular shoes on the market. So the first shoe we're going to be taking a look at is the Saucony Endorphin Pro 3. I think this is the hottest shoe out there right now. It's a carbon fiber plated racing shoe from Saucony uh, that just came out here about two months ago. Um, the second shoe we're going to take a look at, this is the Saucony Endorphin Speed 2. So this is actually last year's version of this shoe and I think for many still the preferred version. Um, it is a uh, nylon plated uh, shoe that is actually meant to be the training companion to the Endorphin Pro series, but many people have preferred this shoe over the first two generations. Um, however, this generation, so far this shoe is getting more positive reviews than the Endorphin Speed 3. So uh, the question is, do you need both of these shoes? Do you need uh, one for, the, for a trainer? Do you need uh, one for a racer? Can you do both in just one of them? What are the pluses and minuses? So let's talk through that. So first, let's visit the Saucony Endorphin Speed 2. Now, this is a shoe that even though it's last year's generation, is still at full price, which is $160 on most websites right now. Um, and I think the reason for that is because it was so popular, there's so much stock still out there left from last generation and because again a little bit of an update this year to um, to really the entire shoe but particularly the midsole um, of the Endorphin 3. It's got a little bit wider in the back, a little bit wider in the forefoot. Um, stack got just a little bit taller this year and the foam is definitely a little bit different and some people don't like that quite as much. This shoe, the real magic here um, happens with the speed roll technology, which if you've seen some of my other reviews we've talked about, basically that is the geometry of the midsole um, and the way that it's cut. So you can see the way that the uh, nylon plate comes down, kind of curves here at the very bottom of the forefoot and rocks back up. Um, that is their speed roll geometry. And it really helps no matter where you strike, whether you're a heel striker, uh, midfoot striker or forefoot striker really helps you get through um, your uh, your stride and your cadence and helps keep uh, that not only um, at a, a fairly quick cadence but also helps you really elongate your stride as well so it, it's really great for just about every runner to kind of maximize your capabilities um, and so that's one of the reasons the shoe is very well beloved the other reason a lot of people like this shoe is because even though it's considered to be a daily trainer that can also be used as a tempo day shoe, the upper is very lightweight. Um, it's just a, a double layer mesh, fairly breathable, um, and not overly padded or overly cushioned. Um, even the tongue is, is fairly thin with just a little bit of padding. But a lot of people feel like this is just a great happy medium between having that lightweight um, and also comfort in the upper. Um, the, the outsole rubber here, this is one thing that a lot of people didn't actually like about the shoe. Um, the outsole rubber is a little bit firmer. Um, it almost has a little bit of a plasticky feel when it first comes out of the box. However, I have found that I think it softens up a little bit the more you run in it. Maybe there's just a coating um, over the outsole rubber. So the more mild you put on it, I feel like the more conforming it gets and the grippier it gets when you're out on rainy days. I haven't really had so much of a problem with that, although I do know some other people that have. Um, so certainly something to be aware of if you're somebody that wears or that lives in a, a wet climate um, that, you know, in the first maybe 100 miles or so, you're going to be wearing off whatever that coating is um, before you really get to the outsole rubber grip. But I feel like it has just about the right amount of outsole rubber, not to make it too heavy, um, and also give you a good grip. The other thing that a lot of people uh, were not huge on with this shoe uh, was the heel collar. So the material that the heel collar is made of is a little bit more abrasive. It's a little bit rougher to the touch. I actually really like this, and I think Saucony did this for a reason. If you have an appropriate running sock that you're wearing with this shoe, you shouldn't be able to feel that rub. It should have a collar that helps protect you from that rub. Um, I think Saucony, the reason they did this was to give it some grip against your sock so that it actually holds your heel in better. And there's a, there's a little bit of resistance there if your sock was to try to slip. And I think that's actually really brilliant. Um, if you look at the shoe, that's really the only place they use this material in the shoe. And actually they kept that in the new Endorphin 3 line 
as well. It's that same material along the collar and along the heel counter. And again, I really feel like that's there for a reason, and um, and I like it. I think it's I think it's a, a good use of materials from Saucony. Um, the other thing I guess that was the downside to the upper is that some people felt like it was a little bit narrow here in the forefoot. Um, I think if you have a wider forefoot, you might experience that. I have about a neutral to slightly wide forefoot, and I never experienced any rub, uh, never really experienced any issues. The length was true to size for me, didn't smash any toenails, um, so that was, a, that was a great thing. Another downside on this shoe, um, it, compared to the new Endorphin line, the midsole foam, even though it is Power Run PB midsole foam, which is supposed to be the same midsole foam uh, used in the new Endorphin 3 line, including the Endorphin Speed 3 as well as the Pro, it is a definitely a different durometer of that blend of midsole foam. This is a firmer midsole foam. And so what I found, particularly being in an area where I run on some pavers, I run on concrete, there's not a ton of asphalt where it gives me just that little bit of extra um, cushion when I'm running. I've found that this is fairly firm over long distances and that your legs will start to get beat up a little bit in those latter miles on a long run. Um, so because of that, I really like this shoe a lot for track days. I like this shoe a lot for tempo days, but I'm not sure that this is really a shoe that I would want to push to a marathon distance or even a marathon uh, long training run distance when we're talking about getting up to the 18, 20 mile distance. I know some that will, and, and again, that's personal preference. I'm 40 years old and um, I'm about average height and weight. And uh, to me, the shoe just kind of beats me up a little bit more than I'd like. Like to to feel at the end of the day and feel the next day. So those are a couple of reasons why I tend to uh, use different shoes in my long runs. The other thing about this shoe to know about um, compared to the Endorphin Pro 3 is that uh, the plate, with it being a nylon plate, which is basically a plastic plate, um, it bends quite a bit more. So it's quite a bit more of a neutral shoe. You're not going to get that extra propulsion where the foam is really compressing up against that firm carbon fiber plate. This one's just going to give you that little bit of uh, extra neutrality to the shoe. And some people like that. Um, I think if you're somebody that likes um, a little bit more of a ground contact type feel, but still that speed roll, you're not going to be able to feel the ground necessarily with this shoe, but it's definitely going to feel a little bit more like a like a hybrid to you uh, between you know something like this and let's say maybe something like the Saucony Canvara than something like this where you're not going to be able to feel that ground. You've got about five millimeters more stack height here. Again, we already discussed that the durometer of this Power Run PB midsole foam, it has to be different, guys. It's it's just a lot softer uh, in the Endorphin Pro 3, uh, which is a huge change from the Endorphin Pro 2. If you had that shoe, it was much firmer, much more like this shoe, actually. Um, however, one of the reasons people tended to prefer this shoe over the Endorphin Pro 2 was that because of that nylon plate, it did give you just that little bit of extra cushion um, versus the carbon fiber plate that doesn't. And so people felt like that uh, the Endorphin Pro 2, that the midsole was a little bit too hard, too firm, not enough cushion. Well, um, and, and so this was the happy median, right? Well, now they fixed that for the Pro 3. And so you have that stiffness, right? You can't, can't bend it there. You have that stiffness that that carbon fiber plate provides to really help compress what's now a softer density midsole foam. So not only are you getting the cushion from the midsole foam, but you're also getting that energy return, that extra propulsion, along with that same speed roll geometry that we talked about uh, with, the, uh, with the Speed 2. You've got that here with a carbon fiber plate, and just that little bit of extra rigidity is going to help propel you forward even more in this shoe without you feeling it as much because you've got that softer foam. So I hope that that makes sense. The uh, the upper in this shoe we've talked about before in another review, a little bit wider, similar to the Endorphin Speed 3. Um, it's just a wider cut than it is on the Speed 2. So it's a little bit more forgiving for people that might have a little bit wider forefoot. 
I like to be able to splay my toes when I run. I like to be able to engage my natural biomechanics. Um, and I feel like the upper in this shoe allows you to do that without having too much room. So you're not slipping around in there um, unless you have a real narrow foot, right? That would be that would be the thing. And that's why I always recommend, guys, buy your shoes from somewhere where you know that they're going to have a good return policy. At least a policy where you can exchange the shoe for the first you know, 30 to 60 days. Um, but uh, I know I've, I've said before, Fleet Feet will actually even let you return the shoe uh, for a full price refund within 60 days. So that's a, a pretty good deal. I think they have the best return policy in the industry um, there. But uh, it, it's important because everybody's foot is going to fit in a shoe differently, right? And we can always adjust the way that we lace the shoe. I've got uh, elastic laces in my shoes. I really like the way that those lock down my foot, but also allow my foot to expand during the course of a long run or a marathon um, without causing undue pain in the uh, on the top of my foot. But others really like to cinch down those those laces there. And so it, it really just depends on the shape of your foot, how much does your foot swell during a run, uh, things of that nature. The other thing that I wanted to mention that's that's kind of a major difference, uh, a couple of things on the Endorphin Pro 3, obviously we have a different mesh upper on this. Now, I love that. I think that's great. And I think if it's a if it's a sunny, warm day, you're really going to feel that extra ventilation there. I feel like the lockdown is just as good on this shoe as it is on this shoe, even though this one has a little bit more dense mesh. However, one or one uh, viewer mentioned to me in the review for this particular shoe that they had been out on a run with it uh, when it was raining. And they said because of that wide mesh, even though there's just a, a, a tiny little uh, bit of webbing. You can see kind of almost like a microscopic webbing that helps enforce the toe, up, toe box that's beneath this wider mesh um, that it just picks up water like crazy when it rains. And that does not surprise me. And they said that they really felt like their foot was swimming um, in, that, uh, in that additional water that uh, was being collected from the rain. So I think that that's definitely a really great point. If you are somebody that's going to a race and you're planning on racing in this shoe, maybe take a shoe that's a little bit less permeable in the upper as a backup, just in case it does rain that day, because that may not be a great situation, particularly if your foot's getting wet, you're sliding around in there, you open yourself up to blisters, um, you're also gaining additional weight that way. So uh, kind of one of those things, I think it's a give and take, but if it's a nice day outside, the shoe does breathe very, very well and it'll help keep your foot cool. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention too is going to be the rubber on the outsole here. It is a different rubber um, than the rubber that we talked about a little bit earlier on the Endorphin Speed 2. Um, however, I feel like this rubber, after it's kind of worn off that initial coating that we were talking about earlier, and this rubber are not all that different. Um, just this rubber came feeling a little bit more pliable, a little bit more like it would uh, it would grip into whatever surface it is that you're running instead of kind of grazing across it like like this one did. Again, it, this one felt a little bit plasticky right out of the box. Uh, I feel like this just kind of comes uh, comes that way where it's just a little bit tackier, a little bit more grippy, a little bit more malleable or pliable just right out of the box. And obviously it has a little bit more rubber in the forefoot. I don't know if that's completely necessary, but really if you look at the difference in coverage between those two shoes, it's not super considerable. And I don't think it's adding a whole lot of weight. As a matter of fact, the layer of rubber on this shoe is a little bit thinner than it is on this shoe. So I don't know if you guys can see that there, but uh, just a little bit thinner uh, layer. And that's probably how they help neutralize some of that weight. Um, so again, I, I feel like uh, these are both great shoes. I feel like they might be best for different uses. Um, again, in my opinion, I think this is one of the best carbon fiber plated race shoes that we've seen to date. Um, I think you can put that right up there with the uh, with the Nike Vaporfly with maybe a little bit more of an accommodating upper than what the Vaporfly uh, provides, but it kind of a similar uh, midsole to work off of, although you do have that speed roll geometry here, whereas the Vaporfly is a little bit more traditional uh, sloped heel, heel to toe drop. Um, the Endorphin Speed 
is uh, definitely a wonderful training shoe. However, I don't think I would take it up to the mileage that I would take this guy. So I think that I would keep this as sort of my tempo day, mid run type shoe in my quiver. I think you could easily run a half marathon in this as well and be perfectly comfortable in it. And I think it would be a great shoe to run a half marathon in. It's about, and uh, I, I didn't mention this earlier, it is about an ounce heavier also than the Endorphin Pro 3. So again, you are adding just a little bit of weight here, um, but again, perfectly light enough to run a half marathon in. This shoe uh, weighs in just under eight ounces, and so that makes it a pretty darn light uh, daily trainer slash tempo day shoe. And again, I really like it a lot. But for an additional $65 at $225, if you can afford it, if you can swing it, I would actually rather train in this shoe, uh, in the Endorphin Pro, and I would certainly rather race in this shoe. I just feel like it is a, uh, it is, it is a almost corrected version of this particular shoe. Anything that's wrong with this shoe has, for the most part, been fixed in this shoe, with the exception of, of some of those things that we discussed earlier, potentially around the upper. And so I feel like this is sort of a do it all shoe. You wouldn't want to train every day in it um, because it does have that carbon fiber plate and sometimes that rigidity can really start kind of wearing on your muscles. However, it does have such a generous uh, amount of foam underneath that I feel like if you were to train in this shoe two, three times a week, you'd probably be in good shape. That being said, a lot of people are going to want to save this for race day um, just because it is an expensive shoe. You know, you're only going to get so many miles in it, although I do feel like the durability of the shoe is going to be pretty high. It wouldn't surprise me to be able to get you know, close to 300 miles on this shoe where the shoe is really responding kind of at its full capabilities. And then beyond that, you could probably take it up another 100 miles or 150 miles uh, beyond that point, maybe to 400, 450, uh, just for the full life of the shoe and use it as a trainer uh, for more of your, your tempo and threshold days at that point in time. Versus this shoe right here, I've got just over 300 miles on it. And I feel like it's pretty much done at, at this point in time that midsole has really kind of started to, to break and compress and it's not it's not bouncing back between runs quite like it used to um, so I feel like you know around 300 350 is going to be about the uh, the height of the full capabilities of this particular shoe however if you're one of those folks that that softness and that extra propulsion doesn't bother you and you want to try to push it you could probably push it up to 500 miles and be okay in this one so again, it comes down to personal taste, personal preference, um, you know, what you're going to be using the shoe for. I do feel like the Pro is a better shoe in every sense of the word than the Speed 2. But again, this shoe is $65 less expensive. And uh, I feel like this is an awesome shoe. So you go from an awesome shoe to a shoe that in all honesty, I think is is pretty close to being a perfect shoe with the Endorphin Pro 3. And you've just got to decide, is it worth it? How am I going to be using it? Um, and maybe, you know, maybe wait another couple months. See if this guy comes down in price. Um, you know, with the Endorphin Speed 3 out there, there's plenty of them on the market right now. Um, again, this one still hasn't dropped because I think a lot of people do prefer this shoe. Um, but it, here in the next two, three months, maybe right around the holiday season, we'll start seeing this one really drop on StockX, you know, maybe some of those, those third-party sites. And uh, you might be able to get this one a little bit closer to $100 or so, in which case this really becomes a win because you get two pairs of these for the same price as one of these. So that's about all I've got, guys. Um, if you have questions, as always, or if you have experience with either one of these two shoes or both of these two shoes, again, this is one man's opinion. I'm just sharing it with you, um, you know, what I've experienced. Hopefully that can be helpful to you, but I would love to hear from you guys in the comments just to tell me what your experience has been with these because maybe you've had a totally different experience with either one of these two shoes and tell us a little bit about your foot type and you know what type of a runner you are your larger runner what kind of stride do you have and how do these shoes work for that and that's going to help the rest of our audience be able to make a more educated decision as far as which one they buy so uh so that's all i've got for you for today i hope you enjoyed the review um if you would like to pick up either one of these two shoes. Um, as many of you know, 
I am training for the New York City Marathon coming up in about nine weeks. And I am doing that for Team in Training, which is a fundraiser for the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society. I had leukemia about nine years ago. And uh, so it's it's near and dear to my heart to be fundraising for them. If you would like to, I'm going to put the link in the description um, to Roadrunner Sports. And this is a special link um, because if you use this link to go to their website and you purchase anything on their website, we will get 10% of that purchase and I'm gonna donate that all the way up to the marathon, which is November 6th. I'm gonna donate that to my team and training fundraiser, the whole 10%. And so instead of just supporting our channel, it's going to be supporting the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society. And Roadrunner Sports has a great return policy also. Um, it is a exchange only policy once you've actually run in the shoe, so just be aware of that. Um, but if you end up buying, let's say, the speed and you get it on your foot, you take it for a run, you say, hey, really like that shoe, but I'd rather have the Pro, and you want to pay that a little bit more, you can send this back, and you can pay the difference, and you can get the Pro. And so it's still a great uh, a, a great return policy. So again, I'll provide our special link down in the description, and so I sure appreciate that support uh, of uh, this, this charity of Leukemia and Lymphoma Society who helped support me when I was going through everything nine years ago. So again, have a great day today. I hope everybody's enjoying their Labor Day weekend, and uh, we'll talk to you soon with another running review. Thanks, guys.